<laughs> Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, sorry it took me a second. I, um, my name is Theodora. Um, I am an artist, a painter, and a podcast journalist, which is what took me a second <laughs> for recording this right now. Um, for my podcast, the Boston Art Podcast, um, that I host with Brian Winters, who's right over there. Um, I um, work at the Museum of Fine Arts, as uh, you just heard. I've worked there since 2018, with a small break in the middle, um, but I've worked in membership, um, member of visitor services, which is our visitor assistant role, um, the front lines in the gallery attendant position, um, and then I work in development, um, which is as of the last few months, actually, so it's a pretty big change for me. Um, I relate a lot to some of the things I was hearing in the other talks um, about the time spent in the galleries and how it can lead to a lot of introspection and kind of get lost in thought. Um, I have ADD, so it's a little, it's a little hard. Um, when you're in a position where you can't really do much but stand there, and you can't really distract yourself with anything else. But a museum is a really great place to be doing that, at least, because there's a lot to look at and think about. Um, this piece I made in 2020, um, during the pandemic lockdown, and it's kind of a reflection on gender. Um, I'm a non-binary queer artist that comes up a lot of my work, and something I was reflecting a lot on at the time was my gender expression and just spending a lot of time with myself in general, um, so not just that. But a lot of my experiences, or all of my social experiences at that time, which a lot of people can relate to, were online. And what I noticed was that my identity, a lot of the ways I was interacting was with strangers or people who didn't know me very well except for on that face value on the internet. Um, and people make snap judgments they don't know you very well. That translates also to customer service and retail, which in a way, front lines the museum also is. Um, and I just thought that that experience of having your identity reflected back to you from people who aren't really invested in thinking about it or aren't in that situation really necessarily, they don't have to think about it. Um, this piece is called Assigned Female at Birth and it's about that dissonance. Um, it's sort of a self-portrait, but it's not a portrait of me, it's a portrait where I was trying to capture how other people reflected me to myself. Mm -hmm. um, these are all real screenshots that I collected over the course of the pandemic of messages that I received or comments on things or texts that I got. Um, and I was just trying with the layering of the images to work through that thought process. It's kind of more of an observation on my part than it is a statement, but this is what I came to. And I feel like it related a lot here because being in the galleries and being on the front lines and at any job really, um, you do have those experiences where people make snap judgments, they say what they're going to say, <laughs> the general public is like that. And it can be really strange when you're standing in the galleries with measuring time or um, like, I had this thing that I used to do where I would count the bricks in the walls of the MFA, and there's 782 bricks at the top of the stairs going up to the gun galleries. <laughs> that um, so when you're deep in thought like that, or if you're thinking about something that maybe you're dealing with, a personal issue, um, gender, um, relationships, something that happened today at lunch with your friends, that kind of thing, and then someone comes up to you and says something kind of rude, or something that I had happen a few times is, um, there's an outside position at the museum where you stand by the front doors and greet people, which is usually really nice. You get to talk to a lot of people. Um, but I've also had experiences where someone just like asked me out, or, like said something kind of weird, and you just kind of deal with that. That's customer service that happens. Um, but it's strange to be in a space like a museum where you are engaging in all these deep thoughts, and it really makes you feel so creative and so inspired, especially when you have so many colleagues that are artists, that are writers, that are thinking about things, um, you have access to the online library when things are down, you can read um, essays and things. Everyone is in this kind of scholarly mindset, and then you have an interaction that reminds you that you are a retail job. Um, so I put this piece in this exhibition because, um, or you know, one that accepted it, <laughs> um, because I feel like it relates to that idea. Um, something that I really like about this project and beyond, uh, behind um, media shadows in general is that it unites museum workers to talk about these kinds of things. Um, I think it's really exciting to think about maybe a more intentional humanization of people that work for this kind of job. Because um, most of the people that work in galleries work there because they like galleries and because they have something to contribute. And you do experience that a lot of the general public because a lot of people that come to the museum and want to talk to you about art or are just really pleasant people in general. I don't want to be entirely negative. Um, but I think it's also good to bear that in mind um, when you're in the galleries and talking to people, or just in general, at a restaurant. Um, so yeah, that's what this piece is. Um, as I said, a little more about me. I work, I've worked in the museum field on and off since 2018. 
Um, I'm also an illustrator and a painter. Um, I'm a podcast journalist. Um, I do a lot of community work. So since the pandemic, it's been through the channel of the Boston Art Podcast, where um, I and my co-host Brian interview artists in the Boston area, galleries, curators, um, just anybody who wants to talk to us about art for an hour and a half. And we just kind of talk to those people and get to know what they have to say. It's been a really nice experience. Um, and I think that one of the most important things that you can do, and something that I think is really important in my career, is connecting with other creatives. So I'm really happy to be here today to do that. If anybody has any questions for me, I'd love to answer them. <laughs> I'm curious about the cockroaches, if you could oh, yeah. talk about those. Oh, I would love to, actually. <laughs> um, so those have kind of a dual meaning. Um, for one thing, I was really into bugs during the pandemic. Um, I went on this like, tangent where I found out that you can order ethically sourced dead insects on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> um, so I was doing that for a little while, and I was casting them in resin and taking photos of things. These aren't my photos, these are from Google. But um, I was using bugs in my work a lot, and I do that a lot anyway. Um, but the cockroaches specifically in here kind of have a dual symbolism where they usually people associate cockroaches with um, resilience. You can't get rid of them and they're always present, <laughs> especially in the city. And I think that can be seen as a negative here where maybe they symbolize these kinds of things and these negative interactions that you have that for better or for worse will follow you throughout life if this is your lived experience. But it can also be overcoming that maybe the cockroach is you and you're, it's, everything is fine and you're going to continue to carry on. Um, so I've used those here to kind of add to the tone of this being kind of a, like in some ways kind of a pretty and hopeful piece, but also sort of a suffocating, heavy thing. So hopefully that comes across. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? Thank you.